Today I'm going to be looking at some incredibly useful functions called symbol info double, symbol info integer and symbol info string in the MQL5 programming language. And the information that we get from these functions can be used in our code to make processing of the strategy's rules so much easier. This is especially the case if you're using a multi-symbol EA where you're trading multiple symbols simultaneously from the same EA instance and then these functions allow us to get the properties of each of those symbols that we're trading to take appropriate action and use appropriate calculations specific to each of those symbols or asset classes. So if that sounds good, then stay tuned. So I've put together a simple MQL5 script here, which uses some of the more common properties of symbols that I personally find most useful. Just before I go into the details of those, I think it's worthwhile just mentioning this property at the top here, which is script show inputs. Now, as you're probably already aware, with scripts, you don't usually get the input dialog box like you do with an expert advisor. So if you've declared any input variables like the one here, you wouldn't actually get a chance to change them at the point at which you invoked that script. But by setting this property value here, we'll tell MT5 to show you that input dialog box to give you that opportunity to change those values. So we'll see that in a moment. And it's just a useful technique that I thought was worth mentioning. Now on to the main part of the code in the onStart function. So here I've split this up into the three different categories of function. At the top here we're using symbol info integer. Down below we're using the double version of the function. And here we're using the string version. Now the only difference between these is the type of the value that gets returned. So for example, if you're asking how many digits after the decimal place a symbol trades at, then that number of digits will be an integer, and so we have to use the integer version. If instead you're asking what the minimum volume that you can trade on a particular symbol, then obviously that will return a value such as 0 0.01 or 0 0.1, and so this needs the double version and likewise for string information about the asset. And all I'm doing here is calculating these values, putting them into a string, and then outputting that as a comment to the screen. So let's now take a look at this script in action. So I've just got a chart here that I've taken all the color away from so that we can see the data that's produced by the script more easily. And if I just run that, you'll notice that I get this dialog box appear, which enables me to input a value for the symbol we're interested in. And this is only possible because we set that property value in the script that you saw a moment ago. Normally, this is the kind of dialog box you only ever see for expert advisors. So let's initially leave this as the default for dollar yen. So we can see here, for example, that the number of digits, so this is the number of digits after the decimal place, for dollar yen is three, as we all know. But this kind of information from code can be incredibly useful. So to know that we're dealing with a three digit currency as opposed to a five digit currency may well change the way we want to do our calculations. And so this is the way that we can get that information programmatically. Also of interest is, for example, the minimum volume that's allowed when trading this particular asset. And as you can see for dollar yen, for this broker, which is Darwin X, that's 0.01. However, for other brokers, this might be different. It might be a minimum what size of 0.1. Here's the maximum volume that's allowed. And again, in the case of Darwin X, this is 100 lots also of great use is the tick value. So this is the monetary value that a one lot trade experiences when it moves by one tick, i.e. the minimum change. Now this will be usually in your account currency. So for me, that's British pounds. 
And so if I had a one lot trade open, I can see that that would be 70 pence per tick. And of course, from this information, it's incredibly easy to then calculate things like what the loss of the trade would be if it hit your stop loss, because you can calculate how many ticks are between your entry point and your stop, then multiply that by this value, divide by the number of lots you're going to trade, and you have the maximum loss there of your trade. Now, just beware here. For currencies, this tick value will usually be in your account currency. But for some symbols, it might not be. And this all depends on how your broker has set up the symbols in MT5. And some other values of interest here, the swap long figure, the swap short figure, so you can calculate how much swap you'll be charged if you carry this trade over a session. But the values I've shown you here in the example are really just a very small subset of what's available to you. So if you just do a search for symbol info double, for example, just by clicking on this link here, you can then get a list of all of the properties of the symbols that are available. Above that, you can see all of the integer values here and below you can see the string values. So hopefully you've learned something of value there that will help you with your MQL coding. Please do click on this link here at the bottom if you're not already aware of Darwin X and you'll find out information about the kind of benefits that we offer to traders just like you. And so now until next time, trade safe.